हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक हाउ आर यू आई होप यू आर ऑल गुड आई एम योर टीचर अर्पिता शर्मा एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग दिस चैप्टर यूक्लिस ज्योमेट्री और इंट्रोडक्शन टू यूक्लिस ज्योमेट्री इन द वेरी फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट व्हाट इज यूक्लिस ज्योमेट्री बेसिकली हाउ डज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द मॉडर्न ज्योमेट्री दैट वी आर स्टडिंग व्हाट इज द बेसिक बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू एंड हाउ कैन यूक्लिट्स Uh, gave all these assumptions and postures and the um, axioms and we were going to uh, learn them one by one we are going to study them one by one in the previous session i have left you with this uh, euclid's axiom okay the first come first the first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh these seven axioms we will be studying and the order of the axiom may differ okay so these uh, these were the axioms first axiom we are going to uh, read it out and then we are going to understand them one by one the very first thing things which are now this is a uh, this is using in all definitions most of the definition very interesting thing this is called thing okay the thing okay then uh, again it's thing here okay again it's thing here again thing here okay so he is he have you been used of this word thing okay no it's uh, it's not uh, uh, referring to any particular word like shape and all but it's using thing okay now thing which are equal to same thing are equal to one another what does that mean it is something like this if i am having a this rectangle here okay and uh, this rectangle is equals to this rectangle also i'm having this is more looking like in like a square so make it a square and this is also equal to this if it's square a it's square b it's a square c let's suppose let's suppose okay now it's telling that these two squares are c and these two squares are same then these two will also be the same so things which are equal to the same thing this is the thing this is the thing and these two are things so these two things are what similar to this thing then these two things will be similar to each other also that means if a is equals to b and b is equals to c then a will be equals to c understood this first one okay talking about the second one if equals are added to equals the wholes are equal if equals are added to equals what does that mean i am having some equals like this is my equal 7 is equals to 7 okay So seven equals to seven. So equal. Okay. Equals are added to equals. Now what is three? Now three is equal to what? Three is equals to let's suppose six by two. So the these two are equals. Okay. Now equals are added to equals. The result will be here seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Okay. Here seven plus three again. and let's suppose this is not uh, uh, written as um i may write it something like 3.5 multiply by 2 now this is again 7 so equals are added to equals then they will give equals okay equals are added to equals the wholes are the wholes are what third clear first second clear now the third if equals are subtracted from equals the remainders are equal let's again take the same example if we are having this 7 minus 3 and we are having this 3.5 multiplied by 2 which is equals to 7 and minus 6 by 2 which is equals to 3 here we'll be getting what 4 
and here also what will be getting 7 minus 3 which is equals to nothing but 4. So if we are subtracting equals from equals we will be getting equal understood this thing okay so if equals are subtracted from equals the remainders these are the remainders are equal a daily life example for you guys okay i am having two bottles these are two water bottles okay this is the one and this is the second one equals in quantity this is 2 liter and this is 2 liter now what I am doing I am subtracting half liter of water from it let's suppose I am just using in something uh, let's suppose in some work of kitchen here from this bottle I'll be having I'll be using again one liter let's suppose it's it's not drinking water so I'm using it for uh, let's suppose in gardening okay so one liter how much remained here here I will be remaining with one liter in the bottle here also one liter so these are the remainders which are equal okay so the third one is now completed the fourth things which coincide which one another are equal to one another this is something in modern geometry we known as congruency the things which coincide with one another Coincide meanings if, ha if I am having uh, 1 kg surf axle ok again I am here, here having the same surf axle of 1 kg ok now if uh, the poly bags in which they are uh, packing it if I will be removing them, okay, I will be uh, having only these empty poly bags of 1 kg surf axel, 2 poly bags of it and then I will uh, press them all, okay, without any wrinkle and I uh, will hold one surf axel polythene and put the another surf axel polythene on that, then that will uh, overlap complete uh, the previous one and if we if we, if, we uh, if you will be looking like from here you will be not able to see the this one okay and if you are looking from here you are not able to see this one okay similarly with the hands too okay so this kind of thing you can understand if they are coinciding okay with each other and they are covering all the parts of it from the both side they are equal to one another basically these two poly bags were equal to another in our modern geometry we call it congruence or we known as congruency we talked about the circle that having the same diameters or same radius they will be what congruent to each other if we will talk about the line two lines will be congruent if we will be having the same length in modern geometry okay but according to Euclid things which can coincide with one another are equal to one another then next the whole is greater than the part the whole is greater than the part that is so obvious if you are a part of something then you will be smaller than whatever of, uh, you are a part with if you are a family member so then the family is bigger okay and you are just a part of the family so you are not bigger the bigger one is what family not you you are the part and the family is the whole again something like that we can uh, understand more in uh, mathematics term that I am having 7 and a part of 7 is 1 okay I am having 7 things something 7 
let's suppose I am having seven segments in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, if I'm taking this part, so this is part and this is whole. So which one will be big? Which one will be bigger? This whole or this part? Simple. Whole will be bigger. Okay. So mm, the whole is greater than the part. Now the next things which are double of same thing are equal to one another. Again things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. Now we will take two same things and we are having very good uh, two same things 3.5 multiply by 2 and 7. Now what we have to do? We have to double it, double of the same thing. Okay, what will it give? It will give me 14 and again here it will be giving me 14 also. The things which are equal 7.3.5 uh, multiplied by 2 is equal to 7. So things which are equal and then I doubled it. That will be giving me the same thing. If A is equal to B, if A is equal to B, then 2A will be equal to 2B. In the modern geometry, we also use like this. So, things which are double of same things are equal to one another. Okay. Then the next. Things which are halves of the same thing are equal to one another by A and B. If A is equal to B, then A by 2 will be equal to B by 2. Okay. Here also. If 3.5 multiplied by 2 and 7 are equal, then this complete multiply by 2 and but divided by 2 and this 7 divided by 2 will be what? 3.5. So, same thing and their halves will be equal. Okay. Things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. Understood? So, moving forwards, we'll be having at least five postulates. Understand each postulate one by one. First postulate, a straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point. Straight line can be, uh, may be drawn from any point, if this one point. And we are having, this is the one point, uh, name it A, and we are having any point here, 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 or here. Okay. So look how it works. So if I have been taking this point in reference to this point, I can draw a line. Here I, I can draw a line. Here I can draw a line. Okay. Here I can draw a line. 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 Here I can draw a line too. That means I can I can draw any straight line. Okay from any one point to any another point. Understood? Okay. What was the axiom here? Given two distinct point, given two distinct point, there is a unique line that passes, passes through them. Okay. If I am having one line, uh, one point and I am having another points here, then there will be a line here. And then there will be a line here, there will be a, a line here, there will be a line here, there will be a line here, there will be a line here. Okay, but I am having these two points only, these two points only. There will be only and only one line passing through these points. If I will again try to meet these two points or um, line, the line will be the same. I will overlap this the previous one. Okay, but there will be a unique line that passes through. Then, given two distinct points, there is a unique line that passes through them. Understood this thing? Okay. Second postulate. The first one you can see here, we will be having some point here, we will be having some point Q. Okay. 
many lines can be drawn but only one line will be there that will be passing through both P and point Q. No another line will be here that will be pass that will be passing through both the points. Okay. Postulate 2. A terminated line can be produced indefinitely if it is a terminating line. Basically, in modern geometry, we uh, we call a terminated line as a line segment. Now, if we want to produce it, so produce it, okay, you can go from this in this direction to infinite, okay. Board will be having some, this digital board will be having certain boundaries, but the line can be uh, extended till infinite from this here and also and from this end also. So, a terminated line can be produced in indefinitely. Then next, postulate 3, a circle can be drawn with any center and with any radius. If I am having this center, okay, I can draw a circle here with some radius, let us suppose 2 centimeter, okay. Then with some 3 centimeter, when, when then it's a 4 centimeters, then the 5 centimeters, this is one thing. Again, if I am having a point here, again the same thing can be done. So, with any radius and any center, I can draw circle, okay. So, a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius. This is the postulate number 3. Postulate number 4. All right angles are equal to one another. Okay. Right angle that means the angle of 90 degree. Angle of 90 degree will always be the angle of 90 degree. If this is A, B, C and this is P, Q, R and the angle is 90 degree then this angle these two angles will be what? equal to each other that means the all right angles are equal to one another and if we talk about the edges uh, okay look and the corners corners of your room they are all what at 90 degree all surfaces are what perpendicular to each other okay so that will be the same if you will be uh, if you will be looking to your uh, left corner or right corner or the um, the, the uh, two back corners, okay, this side, this side, this side, this side, all the sides you will be having, all the surface, uh, you know, having perpendicular to each other. So, all the angles, 90 degrees are what equal, okay. Then, postulate 5, if a straight line falling on two straight lines, this is... And again, I am telling you, this is a complex, complex one. This is a complex one, student. You have to understand it because in five postulates, only this was the postulate that was that was something complex uh, that was having some complexity in it. Other than all are very, very easy, very simple. Okay, because they are obviously universal truth. And by uh, observation, you can also tell the, what Euclid told. What Euclid told: if a straight line falling on two straight line okay sorry a straight line is falling we are having two straight uh, two straight line maybe like that and a straight line is falling on that uh, in the diagram it is also given straight line falling this is straight line is falling makes the internal angles on the same side of it taken together Okay, now which side is taken? Interior angles on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles. So, if you will look here, okay, these two angles, these two angles are what? Less than two right angles, that means 180 degree. These two angles, because even if it, this, this particular angle is what? Uh, similar just just uh, just something similar to 90 degree and this angle is less than 90 degree so basically these two are what having summation less than 180 degree or 290 degree 
and these are the angles which are having the summation more than the two right angles okay now this side extend it extend it they are gonna be a point here this point here where this extended line AB and extended line CD will meet but in case B and D the distance between the lines is increasing here increasing and increasing and more and more and more increasing that means this side they will be intersecting each other they will meet at some point but this part of side they will never meet each other that means this side is what this side where the summation will be less than two right angles on that side only these two lines are going to meet okay and uh, what if just for what if the angle is 90 degree here 90 degree here that makes it also 90 degree and also 90 degree in that case what happens okay these are two parallel lines they will never meet okay so we are talking about this particular slide only if produced indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of angles is less than two right angles now on which side the sum of two angles is less than right angles this side this 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 side okay that means the lines will meet yes at this side only okay here the difference is getting lesser and lesser and lesser and sub point they will be meeting each other okay so this was the postulate number five so we have an, uh, studied postulate 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 2. Okay. Now, a system of axioms is called consistent. What is, what is the system? What is that system is consistent? We have uh, read so many axioms of Euclid and all the axioms should not contradict each other because the axioms are the one they are like pre-approved statements or pre-approved uh, some um, axioms okay so uh, they are we are going to use these axioms to prove another thing okay now if you are using something to prove another and you are having these bundles of five to seven things let's suppose one two three four five six seven and with the help of any of these you can prove something then there should be no contradiction among these all they should not contradict each other okay and what Euclid did he picked all these uh, post, uh, axioms and proved another things with the help of these axioms okay so they, uh, they were not having any contradictory part so it's called consistent so these is this is called a uh, consistent system here he can pick any axiom and use it on in the same proof he can use another axiom right okay so uh, this is known as the consistent system where there, there is no contradiction okay um, that contradicts any axiom or previously proven statement so when any system of axioms is given it needs to be ensured that the system is what consistent okay an inconsistent axiom uh, system cannot work after Euclid stated his postulates and axioms he used them to prove another results other results okay so if uh, you are saying two things okay two or three things and uh, i'm going to pick one thing from these three things and uh, use that particular thing to use another statement okay then someone may uh, question this thing now that uh, he also said this also this and these two things are contradicted to each other then how can you use uh, his statement in such a case so this is the same case here he used them to prove another result they uh, then these 
using these result he proved some more results by applying deductive reasoning the statements were uh, proved and were called propositions or theorem based on these axioms based on these axioms he used another thing and we named as theorems in our syllabus also we prove something okay on on the basis of something which is already proven already proven is what axiom okay so this work the same way here right now we'll be uh, dealing with these kind of examples in our next lecture uh, lecture or next session till then you'll just revise all these things and we will meet in the very next lecture our third lecture okay take care of students bye bye